Hi and welcome to another episode of Hereford FC here in Vanilla FM and today we're going to take a look at the mid-season of 2025-2026. First of all, let me apologize for my voice. I am um, a little bit ill. I've got a cold or something. Um, so apologies for my voice. But um, anyway, let me take you through the changes uh, that have happened in the winter transfer window. Um, it hasn't quite finished. There's one day left um, and I'm hoping to get rid of one of the players. <laughs> Uh, out on loan. But anyway, let me take you through the season. First big surprise, and I can't quite comprehend how we managed to do this, but we are first of the league. Um, even though it hasn't been an easy league, an easy season at all, but we uh, have managed to break away from the rest of the league. To be fair, Fleetwood, three matches behind, nine points. Yeah, Fleetwood are pretty much on par with us. But they have three matches in hand, so they could easily overtake us, especially if uh, it doesn't go well for us in the next few weeks. Um, yeah, so the club is doing well. It's not doing so well financially. So we did some upgrades to our youth facilities, and as a result of that, we are now in the red. And I don't think we're doing enough profit uh, month on month to... Um, to resolve that before the end of the of the season so we'll see how it goes we might run into some difficulties next year but i'll talk about that a little bit more in the match uh, while we're watching the game um yeah other than that uh, let's go back to home yeah as you can see we got knocked out in the third round against fleetwood who are our rivals in the league at the moment and then we also got knocked out of the bristol city motors trophy uh, early on as well so that is fine. I actually can't remember. So this year we got knocked out in the third phase. What happened last year? So if you go back stages, previous season, third round, did we make it? We made it and we lost. So we made it exactly to the same point as last year. This is not so bad. Um, okay, now let's go through the transfers. So if I bring up the squad. Now you're gonna think I'm crazy, and uh, explain why in a minute. Um, but yeah, so we have made a few a few changes, um, mainly so we can kind of boost a few positions. However, I did this at the expense of running into some issues further on in the season. As you can see, at the moment I've got five loanees in my main squad, and there's a bunch more here. I've got 10 loanies um, in total, which means if I run five in the match, the other five can't be included. So I'm relying a lot on my youth. Now, so far it's not been an issue at all. Uh, it does mean that there's a lot of youth players in the bench, but that hasn't caused a problem so far. But yeah, that might be one of the things uh, we run into. If we look at transfers, we still have some money remaining. Um, in fact, we sold, I think, one player. That's phase three. Two players. Oh, no. Um, jo Jonathan left at the beginning of the season. Um, and then we sold Epia. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's go through the squad. We still have the same two goalkeepers. Louis Molden, still here. Well, if you remember, he came last year on a free transfer from Wolves. And the other goalkeeper that we have is Tyler Dixon, Dickinson, sorry. And he came a few years back um, from Wycombe. <coughs> Excuse me. On the right side of the fence, we still have Kieran. So this this position is getting a little bit tired because these players need replacing, but I didn't get the chance to do that this year. So Kieran, been with us for three seasons. And we also have Jay Rowe. Uh, who's young, but getting to the limit of what he can do. Uh, also been with us for three seasons from Boston. And the left side of the fence, we also still have the same two. We have Mackenzie Lemon, Scottish player. Came to us on, free tra on a free transfer a few years ago. And the other player for that is a lonely named Jensen Jones. Uh, who's got loads of potential. And he came to us from Sunderland. Um, now, center of defense, a few changes. First of all, I've changed the position where Sony Alfredo, uh, Al Joffrey, 
Al Zofri. Sonny Al Zofri uh, used to play in a non non nonsense center back. He's now playing in the wide center back. He's on the bench today, but yeah, he's still with us. Uh, no changes there. He came on a free transfer from Manchester United. And now there's a new player, Alex Jakovici. He's uh, 28 years old, Scottish, but I'm presuming he's got maybe Italian heritage. Yeah. Um, he came to us from Port Vale on a free transfer. He was at Ross County before. Um, so yeah, he's, um, I think, our only transfer that was paid for, off the top of my head. All the others were loans. Um, so the, the, the place that was vac vacated by Sony in the non mountains centre-back role has been filled by Henry Filson. He is also a loanee uh, from Sunderland. He's quite an expensive loanee at that as well. So hopefully he'll do okay for us. Uh, and then the uh, centre def the, um, defence role, uh, no change. So we still have Jacobaz from Ipswich and we still have Phil Dua. Phil Dua, also 18 year old from Reading. So no change there. Um, defensive midfield, no change as well. So Gene Kennedy, uh, actually he nearly went, but we didn't manage to close the um, transfer that I wanted for this place. Um, he's a very expensive loan as well uh, from Colchester. And then we have our very own and soon to retire, Rafael Carocca, one of our elite places for this season. So Chilean player has always played in Chile and decided to do one year before retirement with us in England. Midfield, no changes either. Um, actually, no, there is one change. So Jack Griffiths was with us before, from the beginning of the season. But there is a new low knee on the horizon. Uh, he hasn't played much for us yet. So Lewis Orford, he's on loan with us from West Ham. So watch out for him. Um, so far, he hasn't really done much. Uh, the right side of attack... So to replace Epia that we sold, we got Yassine Touré um, from Leicester on loan. And then on the left side, uh, we also got a new player for that. Um, but I'll come to that. So the, on the other side of the right, um, on the right side, I mean, the other player is still Nathan. So we, we had him at the beginning of the year on loan. On the left side, uh, the new player is Frankie Colson. He came to replace Jermaine, actually. We're going to attempt to sell Jermaine. In fact, there's a bid going on at the moment. Uh, so, yeah. So, he's all known from Mil uh, Middlesbrough. And the other player for that is still our very own King Lefondre from Burnley uh, from a couple of seasons ago. And then, at the top, we still have the same two. So, we have the other elite um, spot for Paolo Guerrero, who's been... A little bit everywhere, to be fair. Um, and he's done well for us. 15 goals, I think, in the league. No, no, 17 goals now. in the, uh, No, tw 12 goals. 12 goals in the league, but 15 goals overall in competitive matches. So he's done too, not too bad for his age. Uh, and he's improved a little bit as well, uh, which is surprising. And um, the other striker is Sami. So Sammy's been doing better recently. He started the season pretty poorly, to be fair, but recently he's been doing okay. Um, so that's it. That's the squad. Um, lots of loans to manage, but hopefully that will give us the free... So if you look at our uh, prospect for next year. So Paolo is retiring, as so is Rafa. Um, don't think anyone else will be retiring. Oh, who's old as well. <laughs> Okay, so these two will retire and they'll open up spots. And then everyone else, um, some of these loans are cheap, but some of the others are very expensive loans. So we're hoping that will free up all the cash that we're spending on transfers, like transfer wages and so on. And lots of spots to try and uh, get our fresh players ready for the next league. Because I, I think it's almost certain. No, it's not certain because it, we could still finish at any position in the league. But I can't see us slipping down so far that we wouldn't be promoted. So it's we're thinking about promotion, we're thinking about next year and having 
to invest again in new players to play at that level. So we'll have the spots available for that this way. Uh, we're going to jump into a match against Morakamp. <coughs> and um, I've already selected the team and all that, so I've got everything ready. So it's just a case of going into the match. <laughs> Now, one thing I haven't done, and I probably should do, is adjust all the personal training. I usually adjust that halfway through the season. I've already set the personal training for the new players that have come in, but I haven't done that for the existing players, and some of them I need tweaking. Now, back to the topic of money. So, I've been making this point in the last couple of episodes where get so far um, into the FM game, and this has been an issue previously, in the previous versions of FM, where um, you realistically you can't go any further because the board will outright refuse to expand the stadium. Now, this used to be a lot easier in previous versions of the game. The board would be more open to expanding the stadium. Now, one thing I've been able to do is buy the stadium. So the stadium is ours. It doesn't belong to the council anymore. But we're not putting money into it to invest, to, um, to expand it. And I think this, a little bit, becomes a, a cycle where unless the club is forced to, because we get, I think there might be the case if we get promoted to League One, the club might get forced to upgrade the stadium just because there's a minimum um, attend, uh, there's a minimum size for the league. Um, but uh, if, you don't, if you don't get to that level, the board just outright refuses, and that creates a little bit of a downward spiral where you don't receive the extra money from gate receipts. Therefore, you lose out on cash, you start getting into debt, and then the less and less realistically it becomes to be able to have the capital to, to expand the stadium. So that is what I'm afraid of next season. Now, I haven't looked at the rules to see if there is a compulsory minimum size. Um, which might mean that temporarily we might move to another stadium, use another club stadium temporarily while we upgrade our stadium. That would be actually ideal because that would then force the club to open it, the coffers a little bit. Now the downside of that is, well, would there be a downside? I mean, we would take a loan, certainly. We wouldn't invest, well, we don't have any capital to invest anyway. Um, so a loan would have to be taken for that to happen at this point. We can dive into the rules maybe a little bit. This game isn't going too well, so I'm going to dive out. <laughs> and uh, let's have a look at the rules. Da -da -da. What are we looking for? Ah, yeah. League. Let's go to the next league up. And let's have a look at the rules. Da-da-da. Relegation, no. Stadium rules, can I see any stadium rules? Trial lists. Squad registration, transfer windows, transfer windows, work permits, appeals, uh, Brexit rules, wage cap, Financial fair play. Stadium. Minimum stadium capacity. Oh, okay. So we still wouldn't need to upgrade because our stadium is big enough for this. I think certainly the championship. Oh no, the championship too. It's just, just oh. We would only need to upgrade for the premiership because at the moment our stadium is 5,000 but it's not 5,000 seating. So if you look at our stadium... Uh, nope. Uh, ours is only uh, 274 seated. So, so that would need an up an update. Um, let me just put a break in here. I'm getting a call, which I need to pick up. One second. Apologies for that. I had to take that call. So, yeah. Um, I think this is very interesting, the fact that we don't have to update our stadium until we get the Premiership. Um, and this is bad. This is actually very bad, because I know the board is going to be super reluctant. In fact, we're not going to get the upgrade in unless it is forced upon them uh, by league rules. So, we're going to be struggling financially, I think. Back to the match. 
we are also struggling there, apparently. 2 nil down. Um, <coughs> and I think I'm just going to sip on my cup of coffee for a little bit while the match goes on. So, what else can I tell you? Um, the youth team is going okay. We are, I think, fourth at the moment, or maybe third. They went through a patch of winning every match and then losing every match, and now they're winning again. So, yeah, I think that that didn't help the whole... Um, I, th I, th I thought they had enough uh, quality in them to... Um, to come first this year and then next year they're gonna get promoted anyway because we increased our youth facilities and youth level so next year they will be invited to the next league up uh, we have excellent um, junior coaching at the moment and we also upgraded our training facilities to average so um, oops so they um, they should have everything they need. The only thing that is not great is uh, the um, recruitment. So there's, I think it's quite a limited pool of players that we can recruit from. That limits the quality a little bit. So this half is a half to forget, isn't it? So let's see. Uh, he's not doing too good today. I think he's getting frustrated with the team. And then everything, everyone else. Oh, injured. What's he injured? Oh, I don't have another keeper, so he's just going to have to stay on, I'm afraid. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's get this guy out as well. Let Kian in. Um... Kennedy for Rock uh, for Rafa, and then the final two. I think might have to be Sony and um, Cam coming in. This could be a redemption goal. Mm -hmm. There we go. In the corner. Nice one. So he's a youth player. Plays in our... Oh, I can't remember now. Does he play in the under 18 still? Or under 21s at the moment? The under 21s team. This is another thing. So under 21s this season have lost all of their matches and drew one match. So they are having a season to absolutely forget. But to be fair, they didn't have many players. So um, I kind of just put anyone who was a reject um, from the um, senior team. So any players that I didn't think fit into the squad anymore, but were on free contract, I kept in the other 21s to help out that team. And also any young players that had been signed the previous season, but no longer fitted into the squad this season, were promoted I guess is the wrong word but yeah they got stuck in there because that was better than just cancelling their contracts making up the numbers so this year they'll have a few few players graduating from the other 18s which are actually maybe worth something for that level so not a great match but we can move on from this we have plenty of buffer to carry on um try and pursue that promotion yeah so the season's going well and everything's going fantastic except for finances um it's been a lot more fun to play this version of the game the last two editions of the game 
were a bit of a struggle to be honest with you but yeah i'll come back again at the end of the season and show you how it went thanks so much for watching till the end i don't normally say this but um yeah so if you want to like the video that really helps the channel also subscribe and you can check out the patreon i'm not very active on that but if you fancy supporting it that way then of course you can thanks so much again and see you in the next one Bye bye